good. That's good that you're recording this. So yeah. you can pause and go back. I tell all my students to record. <laughs> Saves on the repetitive questions. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get this squared away. All right, so this is 3ds Max. And um, you open it up, you get this four window. Does everybody have it going? Should I wait? Um, I, I think you should just sort of uh, move forward because right now. Um, All right, okay. Yeah. And and so they'll get... then be able to refer to this video and um... right okay that makes sense sorry ADA uh, so you got it opens up like this usually I don't like working with all these different viewports here because it's a teeny tiny window it's kind of hard and um, to choose a primary thing to work on just click the one you want to work on hit spacebar and you see maximize viewport right there. There you go. There you have it. So you get your um, middle mouse to zoom. You hold down Alt and click. You can pivot. Hold down Control. You can move it around like that. Up here, you got your um, select and move. This is your scale, rotate. I use these a lot. I also use the uh, snap tools up here. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, this is usually, I'll pull these on if I want to snap to the grid or snap to another object. Um, we will be covering that because that's how I make sure my lid of my chest is snapped on after I move it out of the way. Um, now on this side over here, you got your um, the primitive there. And once you make a primitive, you go over to your, sorry, your modify window, hierarchy. This is what you have to work on pivot. So if you make something, the pivot's all funky, especially if you end up deselecting parts of it, you'll have to reset your pivot. And normally I just stake it around in here. These are the ones I usually use most. So the best way to do this is just, well, just dive in. Because <laughs> I will pause and use these as I go. For a chest, we're talking about like a pirate. Sorry, keep hitting the wrong one. A pirate chest. There's a lot of chests in the world, but it's a nice big giant wooden chest. And uh, if I go through my old files here, I can show you how long I've been modeling these things. Because here's my chest folder. And you can see all the concept art that I pulled up. I'm like a digital pack rat. I don't throw anything away. So I've had these, this concept pitches here. If you want something as ornate as this, um, that's something that you model out a base model in like Max, and then you import it into a program like Mudbox, Nomad Sculpt, ZBrush to sculpt that kind of detail on because <laughs> no, <laughs> don't try to model that in Max. Usually in Max, I will model stuff out like hinges and um, feet, stuff like that, brackets anything stuff like this padlock would be I would model that but anything ornate like this oh yes trim I can get trim in there but yeah as I say I've done I've done a lot of saving here's the art concept guide so like I said if you can't um, draw it's fine usually what we'll do is and I said, we, I've done this in the industry too, is we'll do like a concept guide and I'll find some of models or examples, kind of like a, an art Bible, an art guide. And I'll circle like bits, like I like the base shape of this. 
And I said the handles here were really neat, or this one. Possible drawer, but then you got your wish list items if you have enough time that you can do like little cutouts and stuff like that. Uh, nothing that's really overly ornate, like needing to sculpt in, but stuff like little cutout light windows like this. This right here will probably require if you have like a trim piece to push in, but other than that, I liked on this one, I like that the wood pieces are popped out on the side. You can see a little bit more of a hint of the construction and these little wraparound brackets and such. So get an idea of an art brief. So I'm gonna scroll up and ask you. Give me a moment. Oh, side note, you could turn any chest into like a chest with drawers and shelving or one of those little potato bins with the shelving behind it that you can find in a pantry. I've had a modified chest become things. Oh, there's a pop and chat. What's up? Oh, here. Well, I'm glad you're here. Where's my file? I could open my old file, but it is my, what you might refer to as my um, graveyard. It's all the different chests I've made over the years. It's a lot of chests. I might still pop it open for funsies later. But we're just going to start with a blank slate here. So I want it to be as confusing with a scene that has like 45 chests and pieces. <laughs> well, let's not do that. Oh, you can't lock uh, selection and stuff. You hold down space bar. For some reason, I can't. So you start with a box. And I draw a nice box. Rectangle, but like that. And when they let go, you just pull straight up. There you go. Oh, real quick. Up here, you got your perspective, standard, and default shading. Now, if you look at this box right now, you don't see any edges showing up. So this is what I refer to as modeling blind, which is not good, especially when you get higher poly. Right now, you kind of know where the uh, edges are. But so if you click on default shading, I always select edged faces. Now you see it. And when you got relative good size here that you would like, you right click and convert to edible poly. There you go. And that opens up this hierarchy window right here. Once you got your um, vertex edge, border is used if you have a hole. I use it as my hole finder. Right now there's no hole, so there's no reason to use the border tool. If you have to delete any faces or there's a hole, that's a good way to find holes. <laughs> as you drag the border. So right now when I hit uh, vertex mode, you can see all the vertexes light up. So if you've been working in Blender, I'm sure you can understand where vertex edges and polygon or face mode is. <sighs> so how I approach tests is I get myself a standard box, click an edge and I tell it to ring. That's how you could select all in a loop. Now, you could do the drag method where you could drag like that and get them, but I like, if there's a lot of them, it's just easier to hit and ring it. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. And I keep thinking there's a question. You, could, you go over to uh, connect. This is where I always get that little tiny window, the settings next to it. You can move it out of the way. And I make one edge all the way around. This is where I start making my lid. Now I could make another box and snap it on there, but I like doing it this way. That way you can kind of get an idea before you take it apart of where the lid would be like that. That's a good size right there. Is that okay? This also gives me an excuse to go through all my and navigation and stuff like that too, then just make it in the box, snapping it. So you can click on one poly, but you want to get the ones all the way around it. That's all right, you hit grow. 
that, see? And then detach. Now, so we have detach as, I always like to, to name them, lid. Always name your stuff because after a while, I didn't get enough big enough scene like the other uh, 3DS Max scene I saw with all my chests. That's a lot of boxes. So I always like box one or chest one, chest two, chest one underscore variant one, stuff like that. Now, the industry likes naming conventions, so they're really important. So, anyway, lid. <laughs> Let me tell it to. Now I'll go here and select it that way. So now you got two separate objects now. Now, right for right now, I'll pull it off. Ah, but there's a big hole right there. This is where this is where I show you the border tool. That's why I did it this way instead of just making a box, snapping it on there. So anyway, now you got your border tool and you see where it selects the hole. And you just tell it to, there it is, cap. Now I would model the inside of this, but since we're gonna do a lot on the outside, I like to do the inside last. And that's where you drop it down to make it a cavity. But for right now, that's a placeholder. Because otherwise, when you start selecting your vertexes and move things around, you can accidentally move stuff around on the inside and that's a pain to fix. So you got this. We'll get to the lid later because I got to cap that one too. All right, it's pretty plain. Right now we're just concentrating on construction. Well, if you saw my uh, concept brief, I like a little bit of wooden feet. So you added, see how I just dread it like this. You could do that too, or the ring. Add a couple more connects. Right click, if it's way over there and you don't like that, just right click on any of these and it will zero it out. Add two. Now you can spread them out. What I'm trying to do now is figure out where the middle of the chest is, um, any paneling, because I like showing my construction. So I start. I'll also go the other direction too. Now, be, bonus. If you already typed in, if it, it's on the same object, but if you already typed in the, the um, settings once, it will remember it for the entire model. But if you go to like that lid, it will start off with a clean slate. So while you're working with this piece, it's gonna remember the settings. And that's a, that's a good way right there, I think. I don't really think I have to, there you go. This right here will set it up if you want to make any brackets and such as well. So I like to, to um, make this cross pattern on my chest. It gives me something to, like a, to start with. Okay, another quick little tip that I like to do. Pull down shift, grab the X, make a copy. Oh, let's type and call it backup one. You have your undo button, but I have found in my experience that when you start going through modeling, if you make a major mistake, sometimes you only have so many undos. So I always like making copies. It's also pretty cool to see the progression as you're working on your model. Before you do a major step, you make a copy of it. And you can look in the back and see all your uh, your different steps all lined up. So let's say I accidentally made this wonky for some reason and you're like, oh no. Or if you get into the modifier list and start handling any of these and you accidentally right click and convert to, per convert to poly and made it high poly or some mistake, you're like, oh no. And you have a copy to go back to. <laughs> so method to my madness there for several years of experience of whoops. <laughs> Uh, so no doesn't matter how long you've been modeling, uh, you're always going to make mistakes and sometimes make new ones. <sighs> One thing to remember is not to go too fast. So anyway, so you got this right here. I could, sorry, I kind of rabbit trailed on you. 
So the wood, um, the chest I had wanted was, uh, had like a lot of wooden panels going straight down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start suctioning those off. So here you go. Right click there. Now, if you can have one, two, three panels there, if you wanted, or more. I like this because you got a nice, now yours doesn't have to be exactly like this. Obviously, you could put more or less paneling on there if you want. But that right there gives you a nice setup so that you can have the little wooden panels. You could have wooden wraparound brackets later. And I tend to work in layers. So there. If you have a lot of things on your scene, like you're gonna rotate like this and try to model, but that lid's in the way, and you don't wanna sit there and try to duck around it. Down here is the uh, isolation. You can click on that, and now the only thing you see is the, what you're working on. And because you know me, I like working in steps. Do, 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 do. I'll start numbering these after a while. Let's put this as two. All right. And then if you do something like that, then you have to get back out of isolate and back in. Okay. I really didn't want to add any extra edge loops again, so that's why I did that. So then you got that. Now for the feet. If the grid's in the way, hit the G key, turns the grid off. Yeah. So for here add some feet. You can select those four corners and you can extrude. I like my settings because so you can dial it in. That's pretty big. You don't have to have them that big. It always default to 10 for some reason. About there. Not too good. Nice sides. There's so many chests in the world and they're all different. So exact science. Not everybody has to have the exact same one, but there you go. Some chests don't have feet, but in this case it does. If you want to get fancy with it, I like fancy. I'm going to go to left, see if I can get it to come over here. It's not letting me. Okay, then space for it. I'm trying to select, ah, oh, there you go. It's early, sorry guys. You can hold down shift and you can select multiple. Watch what you grab. You grab, I got this one back here by mistake. So hit your alt key to unselect and hold your um, control to add. I'm just trying to get the corners here. Now do you select your corners, do a drive around and make sure you didn't get like this, which you're not supposed to. There, now it's just the four corners. Cool. Now, I'm trying to, I'm gonna angle these feet in to be a little bit more style since it's just like a box sticking out of there. So when you get the scale tool here and on the Y axis, you can just pull and I'll pull them all at the same time. Let's see. And stylistically, that looks a little bit better than just a box sticking out. So, okay. I'm going to select oh, there. Make sure you get the right ones at the scale. <laughs> That'd be really annoying. I'm going to pop out these so you can grab the sides, rotate, get these in. Go to your, your friend extrude. Whoa, down boy. Okay, so you don't want too much, just want a teeny tiny little surface there. I have it at 0.62. Okay, just enough so you can see a panel 
like someone would hammer it in, like a wooden panel on the side. And you start seeing your chest come out there. And the same thing on this side, but this time you have to get the little pop outs or don't. And there's a reason why I'm not. Uh, you can get, you can either choose to get these and have a panel here wrap around as if someone hammered a wooden piece here or just get the sides like this. There you go. Remember what I said, it remembers uh, settings. So you can got like that and say so you can have it like that. And this is where I would later on make little screws or nails to place right here to make it make the construction make a little bit more sense. Both sides. I do each side at one at a time. And um, extrude, boop, there we go. Okay. Now I got that. <sighs> I have realized I close my design brief. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Do, do, do. Okay. And if you saw those little wooden panels, I was referring to this right here. See how you see that little wooden panel there? That's what I was trying to show you. And right over here, you can see it starting to stick out. There's a little bit wrap around on the side. And you got your planking even now I like I chose this one because I like the rounded top but on this one here I liked the this with the feet and I circle the feet but I like the rounded top there too and I just realized I just pointed the this, this screen with my finger <laughs> that's so silly but never did, even on this one you can see the wooden slats which we'll get to so over here, you notice that this, the slats on this side were uh, horizontal over here, they're vertical. You could do either, it's fine. It doesn't really difference. Even over here, you see, because I'm about to, on this side, I'm gonna pop these out right here. But instead of making, um, I'm gonna make it more like that. So now you, get a method to my madness here of where I'm going with this. Okay. Cause that's when you start grabbing these little guys right here. And you need to tell it to extrude. And you're like, but it's not gonna be broken like that. Well, that's when you go here and you could do it by polygon, by group, by normal. You could tell it by polygon, you can start pulling it out, but it'll break it up. Now I undid it because I realized I'm gonna do bevel. Hey, no, no, bad. Oh, real quick, since it did this, this is what happens when it wants to, go crazy because it, it's going to default to 10 and what it, it, it kind of did a figure right like this so it inverted itself so I always go here and go down boy no no okay so now here by polygon so you can really see it up it up and now you can start scaling in don't ever if you scale out don't ever make it cross like that because it, it gets really funky and don't do like that where it inverts itself. So it's better, it's really better just to tap in. There, now so you can see the wood planking starting to go, but I think that's sticking out a little too far. So I'm gonna start. Actually, a little bit. No, no, don't bite that. There. 
not perfect size, but you get a basic idea. There you go. See, this is a little bit of a, a gap separation here. You can play with it and always um, select those and spread them out if you want them. Not all uniformly perfect, but and since I'm glad it remembers your settings, just hit. But if you have the lid, it's a pretty good idea to um, either, I always use a snipping tool or something like this. Snip it, remember it. Another reason why I do this as a, I don't have a notepad, Andy. You always have your snipping tool and you can put this and use it for bevel note. Just save the desktop, just in case. Because when you go to your lid, it's not gonna remember that. And you have to sit there and dial it in, hope it matches you uniformly, and it's not. So I always use the snipping tool a lot. Okay, you go over here. It's like these now. Hit bevel. And like I said, it remembers it, so it makes it a lot easier. But now you got your little wooden pieces sticking out of side. I might do in each section a little bit at a time. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right. So now if you turn off the edge faces for a little bit, can sort of start seeing a little bit of your instruction there. But it's not really coming out as, oh, wow, this is this. Um, this is where I start. Watch, be careful of moving it. But, um, control Z is your best friend. If you accidentally like moved it and you're like, oh, no. What's that? Control Z. Undo. That's where I start pulling my um, now remember when I said oh make a screenshot of that because I'm about to change settings to do the wood wood paneling to do sorry not too much you could go in if you want to make a design, but I want to push it out. And... Pretty much just play with it, not like that. That's crazy. There you go. It's going to start looking like with panels here in a minute. Here. Let's see? So then when you go to edge phases and turn it off, you see what it looks like. Now you can start seeing the shape come out. Oh, remember our little friends on the side here? I want to select that and make it another pop out panel. So it looks like these wooden slats continue through and stick out on the sad hill here. And this is one big giant panel that's nailed on top of the slats. So. I love that. Sorry, it's so much fun. And here too. Bevel these out. Level. Okay, so let me get the panels here and get on top of the revisit this again. 
so I can snake it stick out a little bit further. But it remembers the setting of me doing it again. Lots of layers. Now it gives the illusion that the little wooden panels are sticking out the side right there. See? Modeling is, a, as I said, sorry, I remember being redundant. Modeling is a lot of layering of shapes and stuff like that to get the basic instruction of what you're looking for. And if you don't like it, then undo it and try something else. That's the best thing about modeling is it's, it's an open, clean slate. And just so that it doesn't work, then, well, take a step back and revisit something else. Okay. This is a pretty good basic shade. So let's go back to um, check on ABC. Yeah. Edge bases. And yes, I will get to the inside here in a minute. I just didn't want me clicking on all this stuff and then messing up, so messing up. Let's get to that lid. Okay. This is where um, I'm gonna select both these and put them into isolate so that I won't mess it up. Okay. Now I do, I would normally change the pivot point on this. I'm not. Right now that chest is where I want it to be. And you can get it to grid zero by typing in right here, there, and here. Zero it out, it's now grid zero. This shares a pivot point with this. This is why I cut my lids off of uh, um, the main piece. So they share the pivot point. So when I want to put the lid back on, all I have to do is type in here and here. It goes right back up. So then we'll unisolate it. We isolate it back out. Now you just have the lid to worry about, but you can see how it's just boop. I like having things share a pivot point. Now later on, you know, not working on you, might, if you need to animate it opening and stuff like that, you're going to have to snap it to like the back end where the hinges would be. For right now, this is where I keep it. And you still have that hole. I turn off the grid. There, you still got that hole to, to worry with here. So I'm gonna select my border tool and tell it to cap. Okay. So I'm not worried about the inside of it right now. I'm gonna grab both, isolate it. So now I can design it with the this in mind. Whoops, wrong button. Okay, there you go. If I remember my design brief, I had a uh, nice, like that round top. I'm about to go into, um, and to get that, but, but you got a very basic shape here. And um, so I'm gonna start making my connects here. This is where you can start thinking about basic construction. Like for example, I want like a metal band around it. And this is where I start thinking about that ahead of time. So like I'm expanded this up like this and I would like a metal band to go across. So when I put my hinges back here, uh, they're already, it's already set up to have them. So I'll make those, go ahead and make another set. Spread that up. For fun, I like to sort of line it up with uh, the edging right there. You got yourself a, a 
starting for a metal bracket right there. Okay. Since we are gonna have slats, I'll pop out the metal brackets here in a bit. There's no true order to this. I mean, I could pop them out right now or I could wait and do the slats first. Um, depends on how much of you want to select. You want to go ahead and make the, so you want to select a bunch of polys to pop those out, then you can just go ahead and select them now. I don't suggest try to extrude like this. Um, it's not going to, see if you notice, it went straight up, but it didn't push out. And even if you try to do it by group, if you do it by uh, local normal, then it will. That's what I said. Don't. This is where you need to do it by polygon if you want it to separate it. So when you do eventually select on the uh, vertexes there, then you move it. It will. There will be a poly between those. Um, but since you since this is not bevel, they're not spread out. So. That's why I didn't use it earlier to pop out those edges, wooden edges right there. Obviously, I'm not going to have it stick out this much. This is crazy. You're like, down boy. So I'm going to go here, right there. Kind of like to make sure it's right over here, too. Oh, no, not that. Stop that. Yes, I talk to my, my computer a lot. I'm used to modeling by myself a lot, so. I also do that. <laughs> okay, I'm not crazy, I promise. No, you're not. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are really quiet. My last class is rowdy. Yeah, I talk a lot. I just try not to be disruptive at all. Appreciate that. Um... My last class liked to um, catch me in accidental innuendos. And you can imagine since we're modeling chess. Like, come on, guys. Get your head out of the gutter. But the, the, their favorite game was, let's see how we can derail the teacher. And I'm like, no, it doesn't last long. And I'm like, and they're like, okay. <laughs> College is wild. Anyway, let's see if it remembers the since it remembers the uh, settings, you can just hit the other side and tell, boop, there you go. So now it looks like, hey, look, it meets up, it's flushed. Uh, if I wanted to have my hinge here, I have something to, for it to grab onto. Now I could make it boxy like that if I wanted to. But this gives me an opportunity to round it out a bit. This is where Jaffer, <laughs> it's like one of our opportunity to show you Jaffer. Jaffer is fun. I don't normally use it a whole lot, but when I do, it's not doing what, I, oh, there he goes. Oh, don't try, what are you trying for? It tries. Come on. Quad. <laughs> I don't like tries because it just ingonned on me. This is why to be careful of your settings because if you got a one, two, three, four, okay, good. It's not ingone. Yay. It's way too early. But you can sit there and pitch. Don't be careful doing this. Don't push it like weight there because you're going to crush those polys. They are there. Yeah. But it is an ingot. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we don't want that. No, let's not pretend that we did. You guys remember the old school um, chamfer where you just click on it and just do it, but it's, but for some reason, it's wanting to do this. I may have to. Um, delete those edges and reconnect it out so it'll fan proper because it I'm not used to doing that that's weird why did it change that because you know how they update max all the time they used to do that 
unless I'm a top of class. Yeah, I don't like that. So anyway, that's a good way to round it out, but you get to resolve that in God if you do use it. And let's just say that I am, so you'll know how to do it. Let's go back in here, babysit your edges. Always babysit, delete those over here. Make sure when you delete, see when I deleted it and it, you thought you got it and it left behind this vertex right there. Want to undo. Let them again, hold down control while you hit backspace to delete. So that when you go over here, you see that it took that edge with it. So maybe it's good, that's a happy accident, if, if you will, kind of like a whole Bob Ross thing that it, I get to show you that, yeah, be careful deleting edges because it like it, you have to babysit everything in this program. So anyway, so we don't want, I don't really care for tries, but if you have to use them, small, hidden, don't make it giant because it's gonna, not going to subdivide well, but small hidden. So you click select those, gives me the opportunity to get, show you connect. And this is where I start restitching stuff, connect. But since I don't like tries, then I'll start doing this. I'll take this one, stop that. And there, I, I quadded that out, but there you go. I have to remap that. Oh, let's do this side. I always double check because like I never like trust it. It's like, did it really take that that extra vertex off? Yes, good boy. Okay. So let's pull down control. You can select more than one vertex. Connect. And with all with with modeling, it's a lot of repetitive steps. Wash, runs, repeat. But that's great because this one here, I could just literally just hit backspace and just delete it off. But now you got that quadded out if you wanted to. And there you go. But since you did one side, you got to do the other. Debating about showing you a modifier or not. I don't know if it, you're ready for modifiers yet. I may show you one, I may show you symmetry. Just in case you mess up on one side, but the other side is perfect. You literally can just chop it down the middle and have it mirror the other side. Yay. <laughs> So much fun. But since I remember my settings, just have to. No, it doesn't. But that's fine because when it comes to wear and tear, it doesn't have to be exact. You can't just eyeball it. So even if it's not if it's not like matching the other side, one hundred percent, as long as it's rounded out. And you're good. You don't like it. You can have the uh, control Z. Since I didn't use my settings, because I don't, I like doing it this way and just eyeballing it and just dragging it when it comes to. Ah, yes. Yeah, so look, you saw that? Once you drag it, you can do this. Just pan it side to side. You can get it to round like that. So it makes it rounded out. So this side could be a little bit more weathered than that side, if you wanted. It's not like you can't grab that edge right there and move it later on if you change your mind, I mean. So let's um, babysit your edges again. Turn off this chamfer, it's gonna keep doing it. And no, hold down control, that space. Let's remap this, connect, control, hold, grab them both, connect, quad it out. Because we don't have to use tries, I, I don't. I ran into too many issues with textures with them. But it does these days, if I can get rid of them, I will. The only time I don't worry about it is if it's like, hidden, teeny tiny and hiding like in a groove or something where nobody's gonna see it. I'm like, okay. Or on the bottom somewhere tucked in, but um, when it comes to tries, tiny and hidden. So if something does subdivide weird, then it's not like staring at you in the face. Let's 
All right. That's my two-year-old. She could be my mascot. There you go. Now you could do that to the other side, but like I said, I wanna, I wanna show you something. So like I said, you, you are modeling this side and then you look at all the extra steps on the other side and go, do I really want to sit there and individually do every single one of these? Or in some cases, you were modeling one side, got one side perfect, but the other one is like, looks like it's crazy or like a T-Rex got in on the end of it. Because <laughs> either in one case, um, I was selecting vertexes and I was to move around and I wasn't really babysitting and pay attention and I accidentally got the other side here. And it made it all like Kenny Wumpus all messed up, and you're like, oh. So it's it's good to know this, especially with chess, when you want it to be like perfectly symmetry on both sides. So I'm gonna show you. So what I do is I make a I divide it down the middle, perfect. Uh, just one, right down the middle. And um, don't panic. Um. Yes, I do delete a side and you're like, oh no, but it's okay because you can hit here and you scroll down to symmetry. There you are. And this is where it gets fun. Right now you're like, no, 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 I don't want it way down there. And you can tell it, to... no, not that. There, on the y-axis. And you can see your little um, cursor here, y. So it's going to literally just mirror to the other side. And always tell it to weld seam. So make sure this is there, or you're going to have two stacked vertexes there. But see, if you see, it's going to copy this on that side, and it will save you some steps. And for something like this, it's that's a bonus. I don't always have to collapse the stack. Um, this is where, um, remember I said I made a bunch of copies before? I know I haven't been really good about this, but uh, making copies, I got out of the habit. Um, but when you have something like a modifier on, why did I copy? I'm sorry. No, oh, no, 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 no. Bad girl. That, yes, that one. Make sure you get the right one selected. Go ahead and run it off just in case. Um, Turbo spoof. When you actually if you use a turbo spoof and make things higher poly, and you accidentally right click and then you convert to edible poly, put the turbo smooth on, then you suddenly realize you just made it a million polys, and then you realize you run out of undos. <laughs> it's just another reason why the copies are important. <laughs> You're like, oh no. If you look at now that's now mir mirrored or symmetry over, then you can just click it, right click, convert to edible poly and it's gone on the stack, but that means you can't go back. I mean, you could if you have a control Z, but as you have a certain limit on how much you can do that. There you go. Pretty much got the basic there. You got the little brackets starting there, so fancy. Now, if you want to continue the brackets down on this, that's not that hard to do. All you do is go back to this one. We'll just say that we do. All right, here. If you don't want to drag and drop, just select one edge and ring it. That way you make sure you get it in a perfect loop and it's not just going to stop somewhere. And you can do the other side too. You might do them both. Touch ring. There. I know I'm going back and forth a lot, but there's a reason for it. All right, hold on. I accidentally, yeah, I want both of them. There, isolate. <sighs> Where were we? Yes. Here, here. Got them both. Ring it. Make sure you get the feet. Get your connect. If you really want that help down boy, when it wants to give you more, more than one. There we go. I always clicked on this navigation so I could see it. Just pull it in. Oh, 
month right there. That's dead on. Bonus. I'll take it. Yeah. You're like, but Amanda, if this is uh, not bubbled out where you can see it. Ah, I'll get there. This is where you have to go back and forth between two objects to get it to work, but all you have to do is select it. There you go. Just not bevel. You want to figure it out, but it doesn't have to be crazy. Just just a tiny, just a teeny tiny bit to make that bracket because you're gonna have to go. And I undid it because I realized I didn't save that setting to go to back to this one. Um, as always, sometimes a, a notepad will help you. I know the screenshot thing works, but you get to see my notepad notes. I don't have a pulpit notepad just for my own. There you go. Hey, all. Little notepad friend. Come over here. All right, here. So I'm going to put metal bracket. Just in case I need it. Okay. So I'm going to pop that out by, let's just say, Point four to be easier to remember. Okay, I'm gonna go over here. Point four extrude. Okay. Right here, extrude. Right here. Okay. Put it over the other side. Hit that instead of the settings. <laughs> I'm so silly. Okay, go. Cool. So when you get to the, you get out of this and you get back to this, the lid, and now you have that metal bracket continuing down. You're going to select it. Not as well. All the way around. Maybe. Okay. Uh, to extrude. Hold on. Local. Tell it down, boy. It wants to do crazy. And remember, I said here. Point four. Point four. But because I did that, now it lines up right there. And I noticed I didn't worry about symmetry on something like that because this is such an easy thing to do the other side on that it's not like little nitpicky stuff. And it's not like you can't just chop it off and read symmetry on the other side if you really want to do, but there you go. I'm starting to come look at, look like something more than just a box now. If I take it off of edge faces, so you can actually start seeing, let me see. Cool. Okay. Checking the time because I was always told that I could talk the hind legs off a horse would be the dead horse for that horse. <laughs> so I always had to check my time, like, how am I doing? Okay. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and deck, dress it up because next class I want to get into like the little extras, like the hinges, the padlock, and to dress it up the inside and stuff like that. That's why I'm pushing it. Going okay.